Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thanks for joining me for another episode. Now, if you watched the last episode, you saw that I was in Morris, Illinois at the Gephardt Woods uh, Dulcimer and Traditional Music Festival, and I was playing my Dulcivox, well, not mine, a Dulcivox that is a prototype. And on my way to Woodburn, Indiana, to pick up a new Dulcivox, that's the Dulcivox Pro. I figured while here, why not take a look at how this amazing new instrument is constructed. So there's only one place you can do that, and it's here at Full Craft Instruments. Talk about an upgrade. So this is the Dulcivox Pro. Got the uh, ebony overlay, and it's got a passive pickup by Fishman in there, and it is absolutely amazing plugged in. Now I've been playing the prototype number three since March of this year, and didn't have a pickup, so I've been playing just enjoying the incredible acoustic beauty of this instrument. It's got just wonderful lows and highs. It's not cloudy when you play fiddle tunes. It's got great dynamics from a whisper to a scream. But the question remained, how's it gonna sound when you actually plug it in and use the pickup? And the answer is, it sounds amazing. This is a piezoelectric pickup underneath the bridge. And typically it's got a little bit of a mid-range quacky sound to it that lets you know that you're not dealing with a magnetic pickup or something of that nature. That quack does not even seem to be here in this mix because the additional body and the bracing of this instrument has lended itself to making a better plugged in sound. I'm plugged into this little Fishman amp down here. And I've been playing everything from gentle pieces to barnstorming rock and roll tunes. And this is handling everything with amazing balance.
coming through an amplifier. You're hearing a lot of the ambient coming off the instrument, but you're also hearing an amplified sound, and it sounds wonderful, which speaks a lot about the construction of this instrument and the electronics married together. I'm really, really super excited to be bringing this on tour this year to see what else it can do and what else I can layer it with. Very, very fun time. Here's a chunk of mahogany, it's an African mahogany, some people call it sapele. Um, this is what we use for making dulcet box bodies, backs and sides and fretboards and heads. We chose mahogany over other woods because it's very strong and very light and very stable. This being a wider instrument than usual, we wanted that stability. The very first thing we're going to start out with is the fretboard. So we've got several pieces of mahogany glued together for stability, pieces glued together this way. We hollow out the back, makes it lighter, makes it more resonant. Uh, obviously glue the veneer on, put the frets in, put the position dots in. If you look at the dulcet box fretboard, it's tapered from thick down to thin. And we actually put a little scallop here at the end, so there's less fretboard touching the top. And with that said, here's the top. Two-piece book-matched Sitka spruce. This piece happens to have lots of bear claw and it'll really show up and get some blacker on there. The, the fretboard will be glued on there. The hole not only lightens it, but allows us to center things very nicely so we can get everything perfectly lined up that way, which is very helpful. Then we'll take the uh, bracing, goes on the back, two, two pieces of Sitka spruce joined together. That will get glued in right about there. We have a jig that holds everything centered and flat and square. Here we have an instrument that we glued up yesterday. This has the fretboard with the taper and the scallop underneath it. The bridge is in place. Obviously, obviously a different top than the one I showed you a second ago. The head has been glued onto the body. The top has been attached to the body. We've put in a brace here just for stability. We've added another brace here. We've done lots of contouring on these braces just to lighten them up in the places that we need to lighten them up so they're really strong where they need to be strong, but light where they don't have to be as strong, but still give us some stiffness. Also added a bridge plate, which gives us some um, support for the bridge pins that come through here and actually hold the strings in place. So there's a whole, whole, lot, of, whole lot of stuff going on this bridge is contoured this way, contoured this way, and tapered that way. Anything we do to make the bridge light is a good thing. This is made out of wenge. Oh, it's an African exotic hardwood. Very hard, very light for its weight, and very resonant as far as sitting here. It weighs practically nothing, but it's got lots of strength to stop the saddle from tipping or, or rocking on us. Yeah. <laughs> Casey's hard at work. <clears throat> This would be like when you worked at Sweetwater and Sting came through the shop, or Platkin came through the shop. Only, only they're not as famous as Sting. <laughs> Top hat. Slash? Slash. I mean, Slash has come through Sweetwater a couple of times. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> here, here we have a Delta Box Pro that's much farther along. The back is now attached. We've done some trimming on the, on the sides and the top to match the body. We still have little pieces that are all going to have to be trimmed by hand. A lot, a lot of little bit, of, little bits here and there. Some glue squeeze out, some little things. And so then the next step after this, we come over here to hand sanding. Casey's actually using a piece of, I mean, 20 grit sandpaper and doing some hand sanding. Just putting the corners and bevels on everything. So I'll start off with the, the buzz sander and finish everything by hand. sweet rounded corners for you instrumental people that complained about sharp corners on your instruments. None here. Nope. Not a single one. Not even right there. I'll go in and I'll hit that little corner right there. It's a lot of time intensive work. Oh, yeah. Alright, so here we are in our lacquer area. This instrument has been fully sanded. It's almost ready to go. 
this one has feels like one coat of lacquer so far maybe a sanding sealer and one coat of lacquer we will end up getting it a, a vinyl base coat vinyl sealer base coat and then three coats of nitrocellulose lacquer on top of that and if you run your finger over it over the instrument you'd listen to this but once we sand it Hear the pitch change. Another coat of lacquer, light sanding, another coat of lacquer, and then steel wool and polishing compound. It'll be blast smooth rather than this or this. Another couple of coats, a couple of coats of finish with more sanding, and it'll feel like a full craft at that point. Alright, so um, the first thing that we do when we rub out the instrument is we look over the instrument and see if there's any raised bumps or any imperfections in the lacquer and then we go over it with 220 grit and um, you don't always have to go over the entire instrument with 220 grit usually the sides get the heaviest amount of lacquer so you really want to hit those with the 220 um, and then after you get that all done, uh, I like to go over it with one of these felt pads to really even out and smooth out the lacquer. And then once that is done, we take a fresh piece of steel wool. And we have what's called wool lube. And we completely soak the steel wool in that and go over the entire instrument and then uh, we blow it off and wipe it up real good and clean it up and then you get the beautiful end finish and then after that is uh, setting it up and then it's ready to go out the door Time. <laughs> Well, I've been rocking and rolling inside with this new baby, and uh, the wind is rocking and rolling outside. The wind is really sweeping across the plains here in the Midwest, and uh, it's been interesting. I'm going to be making my way out of here in a little bit, but what an adventure. Thanks to Casey, Cheyenne, and Richard for uh, taking me behind the scenes of the development and now the production of the Dulce Vox, an absolutely incredible breakthrough for the mountain dulcimer. I've been playing this instrument just about all of my life and have played many different types of mountain dulcimers. And I've been with Fullcraft since uh, actually 1994 and have enjoyed what they've been doing and bringing to the table and all the different flavors that have come since then. Well, I'll tell you what, good golly, Miss Molly, it's windy. Um, this is a quantum leap for mountain dulcimers and mountain dulcimer enthusiasts everywhere it's a big-bodied, big-throated, huge-voiced instrument that's still gentle enough with those quiet moments and the dynamics it respects. You can take it as hard as you want to play it or sing it as sweetly and softly as you want to lay it down. And this instrument is there for you. It's very responsive. The sound is balanced. And when you plug it in, it actually sounds a lot like when you hear a guitar player and they're using that piezoelectric pickup, it sounds great on an instrument that has a proper voice box for that sort of amplification. Well, this is a proper voice box and we finally have gotten the sound, the plugged in sound that the under the saddle pickup, piezoelectric pickup, has been used on mountain dulcimers for a very long time. Now it sounds killer because of this. Again, thanks to Casey and Cheyenne for having the insight to develop it and Richard, 
for having the courage to put it in their hands and say, let's go and run with it and see what we come up with. They came up with the Dulce Vox, and I cannot wait to show it to you on the road this summer from Woodburn, or I don't know, maybe Kansas it feels like. It's a twister, it's a twister. We'll see you soon, peace.